All right, complex conjugates, we have the difference of two squares, which is this stuff. That was pretty nice, right? Uh, the problem is, is that we can now, with these complex conjugates, we can factor out an a squared plus b squared. So the sum of two squares is going to factor out like this. We're just going to be factoring out an i which also means that it goes backwards as well, which is what this line is telling us. It goes both ways. Let me point this out. The conjugate, right, it, it didn't make the a a, a negative here. All it did is it changed the sign between the two, the two terms in the binomial. So if you had plus, then you'd have minus. If it were minus, then you'd take a plus there. Now this is nice because if in the future we have some value like this and we wanted to make it a real number, then we can multiply it by its conjugate binomial and it would give us a value like this. Because see, see how that kind of took away the eyes there? So let's multiply these. Uh, again, we're not looking for a conjugate here, but eventually we will. Uh, so. Let's go ahead and distribute this 5i into the parentheses. So I've got 5i times 4 minus 5i times 7i. So this first term here would give me 20i. And then I would have minus 5 times 7 is 35 then I would have i times i, which is i squared. But i squared is the same thing as negative 1. So I have a 20i minus, that's a 35 times negative 1, which also would make this a negative 35. And that changes this to 20i plus 35. Not everyone would need all these steps, by the way. Now this is not in the form a plus bi because I have the i term in the front or it's in the leading position. So I can just use the commutative property to switch these around. That would make this 35, 35, and then I had a positive 20i.